So, all right, I'm rolling, and uh, I'm here today with Adam. Uh, Adam, what's your last name? My last name is Eidinger, E-I-D-I-N-G-E-R. And uh, what was your role in putting on this event today? I'm one of the organizers of Occupy Monsanto. Um, I helped pull off the event with logistics and publicity. Um, I think we were successful in feeding a lot of people and raising awareness about GMOs, making our presence felt here at the FDA. And we're not done yet. We're going to be here till uh, five o'clock. And now the food's just sort of sitting and we're cleaning up and. But I, I felt the energy, man. I felt everyone coming together. It was pretty electric right before the food was served. What inspired you to put on this event? This event was to bring, bring attention to the GMO, genetically engineered uh, food that's unlabeled in our country and, and really not tested and I don't think it's safe. Uh, I want it labeled so I can choose if I want to eat it or not. I want people to be able to choose in the marketplace. It's about, about, about transparency. And if, these, if our government's going to grant a patent for a genetically engineered food and say it's unique and special and it wasn't made by God, it was made in a, in a lab, then I think they should also have to tell us it was made in a lab. They can't have it both ways saying it's, uh, you know, it's not labeled and yet um, it's, and it's different. It's, it's, if it's different, it should be labeled. What do you think is the appropriate penalty that should be uh, forced on a person who refuses to label GMO foods? Well, um, I think that's a long way off. Uh, really, um, right now there are all kinds of food regs that are applied to labeling. Everything from sugar content to gluten content to whether there are tree nuts in the facility. And I think it should be in the street that way. And yeah, if you violate uh, food labeling laws that say exactly what's in it, um, there are penalties, there are fines. I think it doesn't, you don't have to worry about the penalties so much, it's just making it the law. And the, most companies will comply because they don't want to be in violation of the law. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you and I would love to see that happen as well. But for a, for a law to have any bite, it has to have a penalty if people don't follow it, right? So like, well, what, what's your would, ideal penalty? I would find, uh, at least do fines initially. I think civil penalties would be enough to motivate. If they still don't do it and they're, they're being deceptive or think it's some sort of free speech fight or whatever, if they have a free the right to lie to people about what they're selling, um, then over time I would be for... Um, uh, you know, penalties that would include huge fines that would make it you impossible to f operate in this country if you are violating uh, truth and labeling laws. We're not asking them to make a claim that whether it's healthy or not. We just want a truth and labeling. And if it wasn't for the threat of litigation and prosecution from this agency, we wouldn't have ingredient lists on our food. And we do deserve ingredient lists, even if it's the healthiest food. I, I still think we deserve ingredient lists to tell us what's in it. And if it's a multi-ingredient product. And the market doesn't work right if you don't have the truth in, in uh, labeling. You end up getting things, market distortions, where the only thing that matters is price. But um, price not, might, might not be the most important attribute. Nutrition may be a much more important attribute the, how healthy the food is, if the food's gonna make you sick potentially, if it has a, I mean, it might not make everybody sick, but it might make a small portion. We are la requiring labeling of allergy uh, risks. We ought to label GMOs too. Uh, even if most people can handle GMOs, there may be a portion of the population that has will re reap uh, in intestinal disorders from eating these uh, crops, which sometimes contain the pesticide in the crop itself. Earlier today, while you were speaking on the microphone, you uh, talked about direct action a little bit, and yeah. um, you know, in a, in a way, uh, what has happened here uh, flies in the face of what the FDA does, uh, but it wasn't uh, illegal. And uh, it, so maybe you could talk a little bit about what you see the role of law enforcement being here today. I mean, I think gathering here at the FDA is our constitutional right. We have petitioned this this government agency with more than 1.2 million petitions asking for genetically engineered foods to be labeled. They essentially have not acted on it. So we have to bring our petitioning, our protesting of the government to their front door. But we're not blocking the front door today. We're being polite and we're asking them to react, do something, give us something. Labeling is just the beginning. We want, we want more than that, but we'll start with labeling. And uh, 
if we don't get labeling, I mean, I, I think more civil disobedience is called for. I think it's time to start bringing people to, to uh, stage sit-ins, not just eat-ins, because they're not going to take it seriously until there's a real uh, uprising, I think. And so today was sort of a missionary, missionizing event where people came from all over and they got, ex they got experience of what it's like to be in a movement. We're having breakout meetings even right over there right now. There's people planning next steps. It's very democratic. It belongs to everyone. And um, you know, there was no permit for this. Everyone's responsible for themselves here today and doing a fine job, I think, at representing the non-GMO movement. I, I want, really want to underline that point because you just answered my next question, which is, was there a permit uh, for this event? No, there was no permit. The permit that you, you really need is the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment. We have a right to gather. Now, if I was blocking the sidewalk with you and nobody could walk on the sidewalk, the police would have a good reason to clear the sidewalk. But we're not blocking the sidewalk. If we were standing in the street blocking the traffic, they have a reason maybe to arrest us. If we were sitting in front door the, of the offices for the FDA here and we're saying you're not going to work, you're not going to do Monsanto's bidding, they could arrest us. But making soup on the sidewalk, giving it away for free, everyone coming together, working together, it seems like it should be legal under the Constitution. And I guess if they wanted to be technical, it's not illegal. Because this is a larger gathering than just 25 or 50 people, depending on the jurisdiction. Because we have propane and we're heating food. But we're adults, and um, we're still mature enough to be able to light a fire and boil some water without a permit. Just because we're Americans, just because we're humans. So I think that's what we were trying to do today was get sort of step through some fear people had about Occupy, about having uh, an event like this. We, I think we alleviated any fear people had. And now maybe next time they'll feel more confident to do take it to the next level, which I think is going to end up being more civil disobedience. Where can people learn more about you, Adam? Well, I, I'm a, a spokesperson for... Forever. I'm the spokesperson for Occupy Monsanto, but I also do public relations for Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps. So I, I've been a, a long-time uh, uh, organic foodie because of my involvement with Dr. Bronner's for over a decade now. And uh, we've done protests on hemp foods and we've done protests on uh, organic integrity and the list is a long list of things. So it's the end of the day, I'm a little hot, but um, basically, like, you can find me at Occupy Monsanto. I'm GO, GMO at OccupyMonsanto.com and uh, the website's just Occupy-Monsanto.com so I uh, hope you people will visit it. We have a lot of information there. We try to be a clearinghouse of protests all around the world on the GMO issue. People send us their, hey, here's our uh, genetic uh, crime unit report. We call it a GCU report and they send us a report of what they did and we put it up there and we started doing this now about a year and a, a year and uh, three months ago and since then, you know, we've built up over 6,000 followers on Twitter and we have a typically uh, 10,000 visitors a week. And this week we had a lot more, maybe 100,000 visitors this week to our website. So um, there's definitely like a media machine that's coming out of Occupy Monsanto, but it doesn't belong to anyone and we're really interested in people in ta using it and taking our graphics that we put out and printing, out, printing them out and using them how they see fit. Um, I mean, just today there were some pennants that, that were being handed out that used one of our graphics that we'd never seen before, and here they are, the finished pennant, and it looked really nice. Um, but, uh, you know, this issue might seem obscure to a lot of people. I don't think it's get that as obscure as it was two years ago. But you've been more than generous with your time, Adam. I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, I just want to say people should like organize in their community as much as possible and uh, listen for national calls and then organize in their community and just keep organizing. Don't become discouraged ever by turnout. Um, it, you have ups and downs on that, but I think this movement's growing and now it's time to get involved if you haven't been involved before. Thank you. Peace. Take care.